Hello everybody, I'm Jay Appel. Welcome to my lab. Today we're going to look at disaster recovery. Now, planning is something that a lot of us don't particularly like to do, but it is something that's probably going to be required of you in preparation of something really bad that's going to happen. That's why the fire department practices in burning buildings. That's why the police department go to the shooting range and sharpen up their skills. That's why you will be in back of the EPO console as the EPO administrator to practice your skills in the event of what should happen if, in your case, the EPO application is no longer available to you. Something awful has happened. It could be a hardware problem. It could be that you got a glitch on the drive and it's right in the middle of your application. For the purposes of our demonstration today, we're going to take an EPO server. In the case here, it, you'll see I have my domain controller up here called our PDC, our EPO production server called EPO simply. Our SQL server is called SQL. Our brand new server that we're going to use later on is called New EPO, along with three workstations. Plain and simple. Now what we're going to do now is on our EPO server, you'll notice here when I bring up the C drive, and for some of you out there, you may have nothing but a C drive, and you're always wondering, how can I get it over to the D drive on another machine, or even the same machine, which is possible. That's what a number of these videos will help you learn. So what I'm going to do now is take EPO version 510, and we'll hover over here so you can see, EPO 510.0-2428 is the version, and we're sitting today at December 20th, 2018. I'm going to select setup and we're going to actually install EPO on this production machine. There is no application. It's been blown away and all we need is the EPO server snapshot or what we refer to as the disaster recovery snapshot which is over here on our SQL server and you'll see that our database sits very comfortably over here and is intact back to the EPO server. You're going to be prompted, restore EPO from an existing database snapshot. And we're going to place a little mark right in that checkbox and press next. And because we only have one drive letter, we will accept the default here. But later on, we'll show you how to place it over on the D drive. Select next. Checking for SQL servers, checking for domain controllers, and then a list will come back and be provided to you if it feels like reporting it to you. Now, in my case here in the lab, uh, it doesn't always show up and you may see something here when I select the drop-down box on something I might have previously placed in here. But again, you'll need to know the database server name, that's where your database lives, and the database name itself of what you're planning to tap off of that has the disaster recovery snapshot in it. Now, the name of that server is called SQL, so we'll choose SQL. And the database name is called EPO underscore EPO SQL. And that's what we're going to put right here. We're going to select SQL authentication, and I'm going to use the SQL administrator account. The pre-installation auditor is used to predetermine how well your EPO installation will progress. In my case here, I have one warning triangle that is suggesting that I provide additional memory for my virtual machine. Now, I'm not going to worry about that right now for this demonstration. Triangles may not prohibit your ability to go ahead with your install, but the red indicators are a hard stop, if you will, the contemplation phase that you're going to need to ponder over some additional steps and you're going to need to fix that before you can continue. You will then rerun the auditor and make sure that the problem you tried to fix has been taken care of. This tool was introduced in March of 2017 and offers you a variety of checks that will be displayed on your screen, as we have here. And perhaps you will see everything from those triangles to outright red indicators. Those red indicators will be your cue to remedy a particular problem and get it fixed before you can continue. 
KB Article 88906 will provide you some additional information. If you want a list of all the pre-installation auditor tasks, head on over to docs.mcafee.com and take a look at this article. A lot of good information. We're going to choose finish because we're ready to go. I'm going to use all of the default ports. That's what I had in my previous environment before it got trashed. And now we're going to bring it back. So I'm going to choose next. Now, a couple of things for you to keep in mind, and I actually put this down in a little notepad file. Number one, make sure you take a snapshot every day. You're going to be able to do that through a server task, and it should run usually in the evening or out of the way of backups. But you want to make sure that the snapshot runs from when it begins and it finishes successfully and that you know it's successful by going to the dashboards and looking for the actual snapshot progress. It can be very important. Make sure you have internet connectivity to your machine. Some of the lab testing that we've done is if you don't have internet connectivity, you may not get a certificate. And I've actually seen some things in the logs where the failure has occurred at the very end of the installation and you can't continue. However, when I had internet connectivity, it seemed to work just fine. Restore to a different system name, different IP, and or drive letter. So in the next video, we're going to show you how to restore your disaster recovery snapshot to another machine, totally different name, totally different IP, and we're actually going to place it on another drive letter. Pretty cool. What is your passphrase? You need 14 characters or more with the latest version of EPO. Now, my passphrase is called, this is a test of the emergency. And I'm gonna copy that. We'll minimize that screen. And finally, we're gonna put in the EPO admin password. How you log into EPO. And we're going to paste the passphrase in here. A little bit of a note for you. EPO does not check the passphrase. You're going to go, what? Well, it doesn't check the passphrase at the beginning of the install. It checks it at the end of the install. Makes no sense, but I'm just giving you the information. Click next. If you don't put in the correct passphrase and you're not 100% sure, you need to go find out what it is. If you don't know what the passphrase is, then you'll go into the server settings under disaster recovery, change the password, go into dashboards, take a new snapshot, because now the snapshot has a password for the passphrase that you recognize. And then you can go through the rest of this process. We're gonna click on install. We'll see you back here in a second while you watch the installation. All right, we have gotten to the finish line. We have our two Apache services that are running. We have our one Tomcat service that's running. All is good in Wonderland. Now, as we initiate the startup, I want to make sure that you realize that I have drive encryption on here, and I also have data loss prevention. Now, after the services begin and they're spinning up, you're going to come over to menu and you'll notice here that I don't have perhaps everything here. And that's going to happen if you go over to look at the extensions. Just one thing to note while we're in here is you'll notice over here it says that it's running. Common catalog, that's running. Some content may not uh, be running properly. 
don't worry, in time they'll all be showing up as running. And that is the installation through our disaster recovery for restoring it back onto the C drive here on the original EPO server. Things that we don't cover in the video are if we are going to be uh, reinstating data loss prevention to another machine, you may have an evidence folder that also needs to be called upon and double checked. Uh, like anything else, whenever you have a disaster recovery, go ahead and check everything. Check your policies, make sure everything looks good, and certainly make sure that you have good communication with your clients. I'm Jay Appel. Thanks for watching.